everyone, good morning, and welcome to Adobe Live. I'm Michelle Wei, and this is Pei Katron. Hi. For those of you that joined yesterday, we were live yesterday morning as well, talking about landscape photography. Um, and the day prior, you were with Michael talking about travel. Mm -hmm. And um, we're very flattered to have you here today to talk about mobile photography, because Pei is, um, you are very well known mm -hmm. for um, pushing the world of photography uh, via mobile as an art mm -hmm. form forward. So uh, welcome everyone and just as a brief recap for the schedule today after us, um, I don't know if we want to show the schedule on the screen. Um, after us we've got Tiny Atlas Quarterly with Tyson Wheatley um, hosted by Ashley Batts and then um, this afternoon we have Tiny Atlas Quarterly again with Dan Tom hosted by Benjamin Ward um, who many of you know um, is on the Lightroom team and uh, hosts the Lightroom Classic Coffee Breaks. Um, so without further ado, um, let's get started and I wanted to give you a chance to um, introduce yourself uh, before we got started. Sure. <clears throat> Um, my name is Pei Ketron. I'm based here in San Francisco, and my my background is in education, um, special education, and I have been a photographer for about 17 years, but um, for me, what enabled me to leave my day job as an elementary school special ed teacher was to um, start sharing images um, via Instagram. Um, so I really kind of made my photography breakthrough as a freelancer mm -hmm. Um, thanks to Instagram influencer work that I was doing. Um, I think that it, one of the reasons it worked so well for me, I was definitely in the right place at the right time, but also when Instagram came out, by the time it came out, I had already been a photographer for 10 years. So I already understood photography mm -hmm. and composition and how to create imagery and tell stories. Um, and then I just started applying all that knowledge to shooting on a phone. Um, so I think because I was on the platform from the beginning, I was one of the earliest people to start using it in a very mm -hmm. artistic way. Um, and that led to me finding clients who wanted to hire me to do work for Instagram. Yeah. And because everything I shared on Instagram was iPhone only, I was capturing everything on a phone. And um, that really pushed my mobile photography forward and made it a really important part of what I have to offer as a photographer. So I do still shoot DSLR, I shoot film, um, but I almost always have my phone with me as well. Um, so I know, based on our viewers yesterday, there are so many questions about mobile photography and how to nail that shot. Yesterday we were talking about landscape. Today um, is a little bit of a free-for-all, so um, welcome everyone. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, welcome Leah and Claire and Daniel. Um, please chime in on, in the chat pod and let us know uh, what type of mobile photography are you most interested in learning about. Uh, we will mm -hmm. go through some of Pei's work, um, talk about um, everything from capture to editing in mobile, um, and how the Lightroom CC ecosystem kind of fuels that, uh, but would love to hear from everyone and uh, what type of photography on your mobile device you're interested in. Um, but um, before we jump in, I wanted to let everyone know that 30 minutes in, we will do a chat and win. and. Um, we will be giving away this Everyday Explorers kit. It's a journal, a creative um, explorer journal kit uh, made by Christine Heron, who was one of our creative residents last year. So 30 minutes in, you'll have one minute um, to say something in the chat pod, and we have a fancy script that Gus will run to select a winner. Um, do we want to show them what that chat and win video looks like? or? Okay. You guys will, it'll be obvious. Yeah. It's like fireworks in the background. Um, okay. So, and then we'll have, the, we'll have the chat and win 30 minutes in. We'll be talking about your photography um, for an hour and a half. So please do um, chime in and let us know what you want to talk about. And an hour and a half in, we will be doing a portfolio review. So um, we will select two portfolios to review. Um, Gus, our very awesome Gus that's here in the background, will um, pull up two portfolios for us and um, Pei and I will review them. Mm -hmm. And you'll have um, the chance to win um, a CCP subscription. No, just kidding. Just We're just reviewing it. You, you, you get to win our feedback, <laughs> 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 um, but you can email me after. <laughs> 
<laughs> and we'll see. Anyway, so that's mm -hmm. it. And why don't we go ahead and um, pull up some photos on your phone? Okay, that sounds good. Um, I kind of wasn't sure exactly where to start today. Um, but what I did was I pulled together this folder of edited oh, iPhone wow. shots. It looks beautiful already. Just looking so over yeah, I mean, I thought we could maybe just swipe through to see what some of the finished product on an iPhone looks like that, that I create in any mm -hmm. case. Um, I, I know some of you have tuned in um, on other days, but um, for those of you who haven't, um, my photography is generally um, not edited too much. Um, it's still very much photography that's just been enhanced by whatever edi editing software that I use. So um, there's not a lot of like compositing or um, you know different like digital effects applied. It really is just like basic like making whatever's there pop and look a little bit better. So in terms of my own images. Um, these are some of the things that I've edited and, and taken in on my phone, edited on my phone, That's beautiful. and shared out over the last couple of years. It seems to be um, cutting it on the screen. Oh. Oh, that's, you know, I've seen that. Ah, okay. Okay. You portrait or landscape? I'm holding it portrait. What is it? Okay. This one is landscape. So do you want me to shift? It's up to you however you want to edit portrait or landscape. You just have the option to do those. Oh, okay. okay, so if I keep holding it portrait, is it gonna, like, if I go to another one that's vertical? Yeah, it's just... I'll I love this shot. I'll just keep going. You guys enjoy the photos. Yeah. It's a little journey, that a photographic journey I'm taking you on. So this is a vertical. It's, it looks like it's, it's not being cropped. I think it's okay. Is that, oh, here is it is. is. This, mm -hmm. that, so I would keep it horizontal. Yeah. Because I think it's, it's not being cropped horizontally. Yeah, thanks for noticing. Mm -hmm. I missed that because I wasn't looking at the screen. Okay, so I'll just kind of take you through, um, you know, one of the reasons I included this shot is to kind of show you that you can really push the limits of your iPhone with things like underwater iPhone cases. And I was just going to ask, do you have yeah. a, a bag or a case to tell um, you? <laughs> I, I do, yes. Um, so, and, and I apologize also, I know this is mobile photography. Mm -hmm. um, I'm. My own personal phone is an iPhone, so I always reference iPhones um, mm -hmm. just because that's what I um, am normally shooting on. Um, but a lot of the stuff that I'll talk about today can be applied um, no matter what smartphone you're using. Um, for this particular photo, I was shooting on an iPhone and I used um, an underwater case by Pelican. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, so I didn't know they made cases. Yeah, I know that um, life-proof cases are very popular. Um, I've had some problems with them over the years. Mm. Like I've, I've lost a couple of my, of my phones um, with life proof cases. So I was hesitant to get another one, but what I did was I um, found out that Pelican at the time, they had just released an iPhone underwater housing. Um, and Pelican is a, that company that makes those like- Those, hu those yeah, heavy duty like briefcases. Big and heavy duty hard yeah. cases for um, transporting photo, like photo and video gear when you travel. So I was like, they're trusted in the industry. Um, I totally use their stuff and I, I like them. So I invested in their underwater case and I'm, I've been really happy with it. I don't have it for the 10 yet, so I, I do have to say I haven't tried it um, if there is one for the 10. Yeah. Um, Tim, it seems that everyone's blown away that this is all mobile photography. These are yeah. everything that Paige showing was shot um, on her phone. Yeah, Yeah. Um, and this one as well, um, mm. the sort of long exposure effect um, was taken handheld on an iPhone. Um, and so I was using a third party app to make that happen, um, but we can talk today about how you can do yeah. this with the new tech preview in Lightroom. Yeah. CC for mobile. <laughs> I don't even need her. I can just talk on my own. And I was just going to say, you don't need points. me here. So, um, yes, we are very excited that a few weeks ago we released um, a new version of Lightroom CC on iOS and Android, and there is a tech preview to shoot um, long exposure within the camera. So um, it is a tech preview it's not a full production feature so we'll show everyone how to get there today mm -hmm. and then would love everyone's feedback because um, the team is working hard to um, make that ship ready mm -hmm. um, oh I love this shot yeah, it's one of my favorite travel mm -hmm. shots from Myanmar Cuba so would you say you like to shoot um, uh, oh. like lines and architectural or people or a mix? Um. Um, I, you know, one of the reasons I love travel photography is because I don't really have to choose yeah. one or the other. 
Um, I love shooting architecture, um, things that are very um, like geometric, um, abstract, kind of yeah. like lots of symmetry and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I also, oh, this is a good example of one of my favorite places to photograph um, in Seoul. Oh. It's Dongdaemun Design Plaza, really beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I really shoot all sorts of different things, really depending on um, the situation and what it calls for. But I love the fact that on my phone, I can be um, very versatile in, in mm -hmm. the things that I capture. So I'd love to hear a bit, um, like that photo in Seoul, I know mm -hmm. a lot of people have been um, going to Korea lately. It's mm -hmm. a very cool place to visit. Um, your shots are always um, visually interesting to me because they're different. You know, mm -hmm. they're not the, the shot that everyone else is getting. Uh, would love to hear Thank your perspective on um, how our viewers can, you know, keep an eye out for capturing um, photos that are of um, places that everyone goes but mm -hmm. are visually different? Um, I think that what's really important when going to a new place is to really take time to look around um, and experience the place um, and go slowly. I think that mm. that's probably the like one of the most important things when you're walking around. Um, just moments like these that if I had just been rushing oh, by, yeah. I would not have been able to capture, yeah. right? So kind of knowing that um, really the beauty in discovering these moments that set your photography apart from everyone else's is, a, is only achieved if you kind of slow down. Yeah, um, that's great advice. Because we're, we're often, you know, I just got back from a two week trip, mm -hmm. um, just rushing from site to site. Yeah. Oh, this one's in Japan. Yeah. So what you can achieve these days on an iPhone is, is pretty incredible. I know that there are a lot of photographers, kind of, I think it's a lot of old school photographers um, who kind of scoff at the idea that you can really capture legitimate imagery with an iPhone. Um, and I hope that I at least um, can come convince some of you that that's that's not yeah, actually sounds, the case, that you can like actually it. use it. Um, Eric Sue says, these phone photos are nuts, and yeah, um, hi everyone else that's joined. Jan, Dan Tom. Dan Tom. Dan Tom, who will be <laughs> er, here on um, this afternoon. Yeah, at 1 p.m. Yeah, thanks for joining us, Dan Tom. <laughs> and um, Joshua, yes, I agree. The best camera um, mm -hmm. you have is the one that's with you. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll get into it. I know I learned from you um, at uh, Firefly, the mm -hmm. photography camp, you know, that a phone photo really is almost better for capturing portraits when you're traveling because it's less invasive. Yeah, I mean, I think it... Of strangers. It, it can, yeah, yeah. I think it kind of goes both ways. Um, what's really wonderful with um, the iPhone new portrait mode is that you can capture some really high quality portraits where there's like a really wonderful difference between the subject in the foreground and the background. So they're kind of um, uh, like faking it all in software by yeah. doing a depth reading and making the stuff behind the subject blurry. Um, but really, in terms of what you're saying, it's really about um, the fact that a big DSLR it, is very intimidating and people can be very suspicious of it. Um, I'll say so. in, in Morocco, people mm -hmm. tried to charge me money if I snapped yeah. a photo of them. And so did they do that with your phone as well? No, or just a big because camera? you can be less obvious just, yeah. um, you know, holding your phone up and taking a photo. Mm -hmm. It's less obvious that you're taking a photo of a scene with mm -hmm. people. Yeah, and then the other thing is that people uh, at least, uh, you know, for some reason, they still don't think you're a professional photographer. Yes. Yeah. If you're yeah. shooting, it's you're not shooting for professional yeah. reasons if you're shooting on your phone. Mm -hmm. So um, you kind of get away with more things, I think. Um, Andrea says her 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 dog is a huge star uh, with the portrait mode. Mm -hmm. um, that's awesome because I can't take I'm, I can't take good photos of dogs and babies with yeah. the portrait mode because. Because they move, they yeah. tend to move more quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have a good dog, like it sounds like Andrea does, then yeah. you can you can do it if, as long as they hold still and kind of give you the opportunity to kind of capture mm -hmm. um, more images. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can we spend a few minutes talking about composition? Because mm -hmm. um, you know, I think going through this folder of photos you selected, mm -hmm. um, each one is visually stunning and interesting and. I think um, for the beginners sure. out there, composition is something that um, 
I, I need, I mean, I personally, I'm sending, I'll mm -hmm. take photos, compose different ways, and like send them to our Lightroom team. And, and get ask, their opinion. Yeah, and ask what it's is like more correct. The best kind of crowdsourcing available. Yeah. Like, let's just <laughs> reach out to Adobe and see what they think. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that, um, uh, sorry, I like want to read everything that oh, yeah. people are saying. Keep but, the comments um, coming. Uh, I'll, yeah. I'll read yeah. them. Okay. So in terms of composition, I think that there, there are some things to really think about. Um, um, for I know that a lot of people who are watching, um, at least at least from yesterday, we got an idea that a lot of the people were watching were like newer photographers. Yeah. So if you're new to photography and thinking about composition, one of the things that we like to talk about is the rule of thirds. And that really is the idea that if you divide your frame up, and this is why, um, the like different cameras, um, smartphones, all different smartphones, and including the Lightroom camera, native iPhone camera, Android cameras, you can turn on a grid. So you can basically see, um, basically uh, your frame is divided into thirds, mm -hmm. horizontally and vertically as well. And the rule of thirds basically states that you wanna place your important items um, along either the thirds, like any of those lines, or at the points where they intersect. So mm -hmm. are you pulling it up to show? Oh. oh, you know, what? I can do it on mine because I have, um, I'm, I'm connected right now. So, so I'm seeing a lot of comments about um, DNG and JPEG and um, the differences between Lightroom CC and Lightroom Classic. So Jan, thank you so much for all of your um, comments. We'll get into that. Uh, but I want to cover the DNG versus JPEG. Mm -hmm. And um, that is uh, definitely a huge drawback of just shooting on your camera um, the app. IPhone, yeah. the, the native, native iPhone. The um, native iPhone camera app because it doesn't give you the option to shoot in DNG, which is a raw file format. Um, and what Pei has up here is the camera app mm -hmm. within Lightroom Mobile. Mm -hmm. And um, you'll see on the top, there's a DNG sign. And if you, um, yep, if you, tap it, there's the option to shoot JPEG or DNG. But um, really, there's no reason to shoot JPEG. <laughs> right, if you're shooting within the Lightroom camera app, um, you might as well shoot raw. Mm -hmm. um, the way that I usually do it, I mean, I, I, I definitely tend to default more towards the native camera app um, because I've just been doing it for so long. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the things that I capture are like photos of my dog or yeah. photos of my food, just stuff that I don't, I know that I'm not gonna print big and for, mm -hmm. like I don't need like top notch quality mm -hmm. for every single photo of my dog. I mean, yeah. maybe some, but like not every <laughs> single one. What's so, your dog's name, Luna? So I've, I have oh, two cute. dogs. Yeah. Um, allow me to show yes. you. This is oh. Luna. Luna and Tara, they're my two babies. So they might be watching from home right, right now. Yeah, Who knows? they're so cute. <laughs> Um, yeah, they're pretty great. So what I was saying is like, um, I know that I don't need or want raw format for every photo. So that's one of the reasons why that differentiates um, which camera I, I capture in. Mm -hmm. um, You're getting lots of love <laughs> for your dogs. Thanks, <laughs> thanks guys. Maybe we'll, um, we'll um, edit some dog photos later. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I probably have some of those on my phone. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Um, but the reason I first pulled up this camera today was to show you that grid, because you were asking mm -hmm. me about composition. Yeah. So to show you the grid that you can turn on um, within the Lightroom camera app. So on the top right, you have these three dots. And in the center, you have these different grid and level, uh, these different grid options, and then you mm -hmm. have a level as well. But you can basically change to like a different type of grid if you want. And mm -hmm. I usually just use the third. Thirds. Yeah. And then I also do that on my native iPhone camera. You can do that within the settings on the iPhone. The Android cameras also have that functionality as well. Um, and so what I was saying, the rule of thirds is that, you know, they want you to place, the rule says that you should try to place important elements along either the lines or at the points where they intersect. Um, and then the way that I usually dif differentiate is um, like, like this one, for example, clearly, if we could switch it to the horizontal, this one clearly yeah. doesn't follow the rule of thirds. Um, so there are always reasons to break that rule. Mm -hmm. um, and the way that I decide is like, I look at I look at a scene and try to decide, you know, how important is the stuff on the top and how yeah. important is the stuff on the bottom? If it's equally as important, just like this kind of reflection photo, then I might place the, uh, hori uh, the horizon right in the center. Mm -hmm. But if it's something like, let me see if I have an example, 
like this, where the the water below was really one of the mm. most interesting parts of it. Mm -hmm. um, there wasn't really much interesting going on in the sky, so I didn't need that to take up as much of, as my frame as much of my frame. So I pushed the horizon up and let the the bottom, the foreground, really fill the frame. It's kind of like the same idea for a lot of these types of images, like pushing your horizon off center, mm -hmm. um, depending on what it is that you're trying to show. Yeah. And sometimes the most and then interesting photos mm -hmm. are not exactly um, following the rule of thirds mm -hmm. or the golden ratio. And yeah. um, that's where I, I mean, myself, I'm trying to, you know, shoot them in a more technically accurate like composition, mm -hmm. but then try to find my point of view. Yeah, I think it's important to know what the rules are Yeah, and then decide how or when you're going to break them. Mm -hmm. um, everything is really sort of based on a gut feeling and mm -hmm. like rather than like uh, trying to check all these boxes yeah. and meet all the requirements of these rules. Um, and I get the question a lot, like how do you remember all these things? Because, you know, I teach composition mm -hmm. and we talk about all these different rules to kind of think about or keep in mind or like tips and tricks for composition. and it's not about like thinking about all these things as I'm shooting, mm -hmm. you know, once you've practiced enough, and this is why we always say like to new photographers, just keep shooting, keep shooting, keep shooting, just practice, 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 um, that it really becomes second nature mm -hmm. and you don't have to think about it too much. And it, it's not a conscious decision. Yeah. It's not a conscious decision that I made to push my horizon down that low on this photo. Mm -hmm. um, it just happened kind of based mm -hmm. on what I wanted to show in the image and what resonated with me. So um, people are talking about um, phone, quali the mm -hmm. quality of photos, um, and yes, the quality that um, you capture in the native um, camera app um, can be lower and not so great for blowing up, mm -hmm. uh, but shooting in DNG helps with that. And I think an interesting question for you, Pei, is mm -hmm. have you been hired for um, your mobile photography? Mm -hmm. uh, do you, have you had uh, professional gigs mm -hmm. uh, for just shooting on? on your yeah. phone? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, so I, I've had quite a number of photo gigs where I've been hired specifically mm -hmm. to shoot on my phone. Um, I'd say one of the more notable ones is a, a shoot I did for Mercedes. Mm. Um, and I shot that, this was a couple of years ago even, it, I shot it on the oh. iPhone 5S. Mm -hmm. And that image, you know, went on my Instagram feed, it also went onto the Mercedes website. Um, and when I explained to them that I wanted to shoot everything, you know, they hired me, they knew they wanted to hire me, and I explained to them that I wanted to shoot everything on my phone, and they said, um, well, if you're telling us that everything we're seeing basically on, on my portfolio, which was Instagram, mm -hmm. um, if you're saying that everything that we're looking at was taken on an iPhone, we absolutely feel confident that you can capture what we need you to capture using your phone. And they hired me, and it went well, and they were happy. So, um, so those photos, where did they go on to live besides Instagram, or is it on just the Mercedes website? Ah, so they're, I mean, they're probably not there now. It was yeah. a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's it really is. You know, you do have to think about what your final output is. Yeah. So I know that there are a lot of naysayers who are like, well, you can't do such and such with an iPhone photo. And really, my answer is, well, if you know that you want to do such and such, like print a billboard. I mean. So I know iPhone does their shot on iPhone billboards and stuff. Yeah. Um, but the, the average person isn't really going to do that. Um, and if I was given the choice of capturing on a phone or on a DSLR to shoot a big billboard campaign, I would choose a DSLR because I understand that the more data I have, the better. So if I know I'm shooting for a billboard campaign, I shoot on a DSLR. If I know that I'm shooting my dogs at home, I can shoot on my phone. If mm -hmm. I know that it's going on Instagram, I can shoot on my phone. If I don't have another camera with me, which is most of the time, I can shoot on my phone and be very confident about the results I'm getting. Yeah. And then in terms of um, printing, I know somebody mentioned um, something about printing. Um, I have printed my iPhone photos that were shot on JPEG, not, not RAW or DNG. Um, I've printed those at 11 by 14 and not seen any significant quality loss. And I could have, oh, wow. I think I could have pushed it higher and yeah. still been happy with it. So. The, the average person isn't usually printing at larger than eight, 11 by 14 um, for anything. And if you, if you, and if you are, you know, pick a, different, pick a different phone or pick a different camera, honestly. Yeah. Um, and I know the, um, a little earlier in the chat pod, I wanted, as you're talking about, um, you know, major brands hiring you for your work, 
um, the question came across, what was your first photography gig? My very first photo yeah. gig? Oh, uh, <laughs> that's taken it way back. That was long before iPhones were even invented, kids. <laughs> um, so, so it was not a mobile photography? It was not a mobile photography gig. So I would say um, I started shooting in 2001, um, mm -hmm. and my I started teaching um, in 2002. And what I did was I took photos of my students in the classroom because oh. um, it was good practice for me and then it was fun to document the kids. And then what I would do is send those photos home to the parents. Yeah, and I'm sure I, they love that. They, they love <laughs> them. And I worked with a lot of uh, students who were, um, who had um, like moderate to severe disabilities. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to photograph them when you don't know them, when you yeah. don't know their their personalities, yeah. their, like the little nuances that mm -hmm. show that they're having a great time and they're happy and like understand the timing of interacting with them. Um, so I got some really wonderful images of the kids and I would send home and the parents would be like, you know, nobody has ever taken photos like this of our kids because they, they're not a, people, not a lot of people who know the kids well mm -hmm. and who also know photography. So the first photo jobs that I got were the parents of my students hiring me to do portrait sessions. Yeah. And that was that was really fun. That's that was a very nice special. It was very special and a nice way to kind of break into it. Mm -hmm. And then separately it spawned like it turned into like parents of uh, parents of the students getting remarried and asking me to take wedding photos. So that's I just yeah. was like, okay, I I mean I have a camera and I have an interest and I guess I can try this yeah. wedding thing and I got, paid, I got paid so little, it was probably more like me paying them <laughs> to let me take their wedding photos. So, but. Yeah, and you, you spoke about this yesterday, mm -hmm. um, and I thought it was very interesting that wedding photography taught you so much because yeah. you have to be versatile. Yeah. Um, and, you, you know, bringing that knowledge into travel photography where mm -hmm. you also have to be very versatile. Yeah, I kind of feel like wedding photography was sort of preparation for me becoming a travel photographer mm -hmm. because it made me good at portraits and landscapes and food photography and event photography mm -hmm. and street photography and just kind of any kind of thing that you could think of. Um, I had some sort of idea how I could achieve the imagery that I wanted. Yeah. Um, well, thank you. And thank you, Leah, for asking that. Mm -hmm. uh, Pei's background is very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so it's always fun to hear more about it. Um, so you walked us through the um, selects, you know, that you made yeah. of your travel photography. Um, what I thought might be interesting is just... Can I see some before afters? Yeah. I mean... <laughs> I was going to ask you about oh, shooting, but yeah. yeah, let's do some before afters. We could do quick before afters. Yeah. Um, and I know we have two minutes before we have to do the chat and one. Ah, good eye. So yeah, you, see everyone in the, you see everyone in the countdown, we have um, a little over a minute for the chat and win. So stick with us and be sure to um, say something in the chat pod when we start. So I'll just do these really quickly and just stop me whenever mm -hmm. you need me to stop. But um, I generally do um, just a little sprucing up, you know, like I make the moderate adjustments and then I clean up. So things like um, if you look along the top edge, you can see what I've done with this one. Mm -hmm. Before, after, before, after. Ah, uh, yeah. So it's just a little bit of brightening, um, cleaning, and then like cleaning up the top. Just, I don't want my eye to go where I, um, where I don't want it to go. Basically, yeah. like I don't want there to be distracting elements that pull mm -hmm. my eye away from what's important. Um, this is another one before, after. Oh wow! Just these this. light edits are, um, you know, significant mm -hmm. in that they make a big difference, but, but they're I didn't not do much heavy to handed. Them. Yeah. yeah, and then I cropped this one in for the final version, because I wanted the raindrops to really show through. And again, uh, I, I was using the Pelican um, waterproof case for the phone when I took these. Before, oh, sorry, sorry, I'm gonna get these, I don't know if they show up on the screen. Before, after. What is this a photo of? This is a, a sculpture that you can walk into. It's on the art islands in, oh, Noshima. in Tok Noshima. Yeah, so this yeah. is another no Noshima It's a one. dream destination. Yeah, it's pretty wonderful. This one, I think I just did um, like a slight straightening of the horizon, you'll see, before, after. And then I also cleaned up her arm. She had some distracting spots on her mm -hmm. arm that, I mean, I don't think she minded that I got rid of them <laughs> before. Um, and then this one is, um, there were trees in the background behind her head. I think there's a lag. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh. 
I see. Yeah. So I just kind of got rid of those. This one's almost too subtle to notice, actually. But it makes a big difference. Um, just yeah. removing the distracting objects. So we are yeah. um, at the chat and win time point. Cool. So um, you'll see these fireworks going off and um, cue, the, cue the video. So everyone, please do um, participate in the chat pod uh, for an opportunity to win this Creative Journal Kit by Christine Herring. Hi, thank you, uh, Beth, Andrea, Chris, everyone, for uh, participating in Chat and Win. So, we will run the script to select the winner. Okay. Oh, wow, there's a, lo a lot of people still adding, chatting. I mean, when you incentivize it, there's like, how about we move on in? Yeah. Um, I have Dan Tom really wants to win. <laughs> so I we can what stop doing that? this and moving move on, or we oh. can keep. So we have a winner, Siobhan. Siobhan Fraser. Congratulations, Siobhan. Thank you for participating, and congratulations um, mm -hmm. to you for winning this very cool Everyday Explorers kit. Um, mm -hmm. The team will reach out to you and get this to you. Siobhan, where are you from? Where are we sending this to? And um, thank you everyone else for participating. And we'll get back to it. Cool, yeah. Um, so I guess there are a couple more. Do you wanna see yes. the rest of them? Okay. Before and afters are always I, um, so people compelling. People love before and afters. So um, before, after. And some of these, like this one is cropped to a four by five to fit in the Instagram vertical mm -hmm. format, the aspect ratio that they restrict you to. Um, it always kills me. Yeah, so some like this one, it's fine because I can lose a little bit. Yeah. But there's some that really um, don't work when you crop them mm -hmm. too much. So this one's kind of oh, subtle, wow. and I just I like really clean borders, so I try mm -hmm. to like get rid of distracting things along the borders. Um, this next one is is pretty dramatic. This is probably as as drastic as of a change as I make. Um, I couldn't photograph the scene from any other way to avoid that post. Um, so, I just got rid of it. That's like, oh, that's I a pretty see. big thing, yeah. yeah. So before, after. Yeah. Before, after. I mean, it's a simple removal. Mm. Yeah. Um, but it makes a big difference for the viewer's eye. Yeah. This oh, is wow. just a little like brightening, brightening up. Brightening? Yeah. Warming up as well. Mm -hmm. Before, after. Before. I mean, I kind of like both versions of this. Oh, uh, yeah. Sometimes I, I show like these. In. Yeah. Um, sometimes I show these and people are like, but I like the original one better, <laughs> which is <laughs> funny. <laughs> Before, that was the original version. Oh, of, the original is, is already yeah. stunning. Yeah, it, it was like just beautiful. I barely did anything. Yeah. Right? Where is this photo? Up. This is in Da Nang in Vietnam at oh, wow. the Intercontinental. Mm -hmm. um, I did a job for them like three or three or four years ago, and I was like, man, this is a, this would be like a wonderful honeymoon destination. So when I got married last year, my husband and I went back there for a couple of days, which was oh. really nice. So and again, ah. yeah. this was here at SF MoMA before, after. I just saw the light on the yeah. floor like reflecting onto her face. Uh, and I was you. like, hold still, I need to photograph you right there. Sorry, we'll pop it over. And then um, this is one, I also don't normally crop so dramatically, but I liked this photo a lot and I couldn't figure out um, how I wanted it to be in the end. And I always, when it's very graphic like this, mm -hmm. um, where the colors don't really matter, I always go to black and white. And then I, mm -hmm. I knew I needed a change with the crop, so I, tried this and I, I like the end result much ah, better. Yeah. So it's the same photo, just kind of cropped in mm -hmm. tight and 
convert it to black and white. Yeah, and Dan Tom says cropping is life. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I honestly try not to crop too, too much. much in general because I want to maintain the highest quality image as possible. And mm -hmm. if I'm cropping too much out, like basically, you know, I cropped off what more than like about half of this, the data from this, sorry, mm -hmm. from this image. So I'm not going to be able to print this as big as I would yeah. otherwise. Um, but for me, I'm not printing this. I'm putting it on Instagram. It's, it's okay to crop. Do you um, ever print bit. your photos? Um, sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes I do. I'm trying to be better about it because I know it's so nice to have the, just like yeah. something tangible. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last one is, again, a shot where, for me, the shapes were the important part yeah. and the colors don't matter at all. So when I have images like that, I convert them to black and white. Oh, so I knew immediately upon walking to this building yeah. that I wanted to photograph it and then change it to black and white. So, so. Um, is it always an intentional choice as you're shooting that you know you're going to be editing it to be black and white? Uh, not, not always, mm -hmm. but I think most of the time at this point I kind of understand, like, I... You know, as a photographer, you get really good when you've practiced so much at kind yeah. of anticipating what your next step is going to be. Mm -hmm. So I do oftentimes now think about whether or not I want it to be in black yeah. and white in the final version. Um, and, and then I, think the I don't black know. Black and white um, lets me focus on the shapes yeah. and the lines. Yeah. So. And I often just like to, um, I might edit a photo in both ways and just do a comparison yeah. and, and see which one I like better. Um, there was a question um, from Joshua, who was here the other day as well. Yeah, welcome back, so, Joshua. Thanks for coming back. Mm -hmm. um, I do sometimes, um, some jobs that I do for clients, um, they do want me to share on Instagram stories. And if that's the case, then I do do that uh, 9 by 16 vertical crop for them. Mm. Um, and I definitely want to be in charge of it. So I don't, I don't just let the them. Instagram app select it for me, so I pre-crop before mm -hmm. I bring into Instagram stories. That's something that I don't do. But <laughs> yes, um, because it does cut off. You know, if you have a nice photo, it, yeah. it definitely changes it a lot. And at least they're nice enough now that you can, you know, if you're po posting like a, a landscape image in IG stories, you can just pinch it and it'll shrink it and fit it within the frame, which mm -hmm. is really, really nice. They didn't used to do that. Yeah. So. Um, so now that we've gone through some before and afters, I mm -hmm. thought it'd be nice. Um, I don't know if everyone remembers what their favorite photos were. There's so many. But if mm -hmm. you do have a favorite one, let's go through the edits. Um, sure. Then... Like, talk about what I did to them or what? Yeah. Is that what you mean? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we could do that. Or I could do like a demo, edit demo. Would yes, that be that's, useful? Yeah. Okay. So, let's see. Oh. <laughs> oh, can I talk about these really quickly? Yeah, please do. Okay. So I have um, some items that I want to share with you. Um, you know, I do talk a lot about sort of extending the capabilities of your smartphone. So mm -hmm. the, the phone is great, but if you can do things like um, use add-on lenses, you can sort of help to sort mm -hmm. of ex extend the capabilities of your phone. So um, moment lenses are my favorite um, uh, add-on lenses that I've used. Um, they're, they're very high quality, they're made of metal and glass, so they're, you know, for their size, they're heavy, which mm -hmm. kind of makes it feel like it's actually like a quality product. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like a stone mm -hmm. almost. Mm -hmm. um, but they make four, they, so far they've had four different lenses and they're coming out with a fifth one that's more for like video production. Um, but this is a wide angle lens, so on an mm -hmm. iPhone at least, the, yeah. Yeah, the focal length is about 28 millimeters, um, the wide, and then the wide moment lens is about 18, so it takes it a little bit wider. Um, the other lenses they have, they have one that's a, this is a macro. I didn't bring them all, because I didn't, you, mm -hmm. you don't need to, you're not gonna try them today, yeah. so I didn't, I didn't bring them, but um, this is a macro lens, which is, is um, really, really, really good. Actually, yeah. I don't really shoot macro photography, so I don't use it too often personally. Um, but you can get some really cool results with it, and you can get really close. Like I taught in Santa Fe last week, and my one of my mm -hmm. students was using this, and he was photographing um, like a cactus in the desert, and he was photographing it. He got so close that one of the ants from the cactus oh, crawled wow. crawled onto the lens. So you can get really close with um, with this lens. Yeah. They they also have um, 
a telephoto, which is about 60 millimeters, mm -hmm. and they have uh, a fisheye that is, um, it's kind of, it's fun to play with, um, but is sort of of limited artistic use, I think, yeah. in the long run. Um, but I'm really happy with that, and then what I do is I attach it to, I have the moment case. I was um, just going to say you have to get the moment case to attach it. Or, well, you, or don't, the... you don't have to. You can get the case, um, or you can use like a metal adhesive mount that just sticks onto the back of your camera mm -hmm. um, or your phone. So that's one option. I did that for years, um, but now that they have a case that's actually quite good, mm -hmm. I use it as my everyday case. Even if I don't shoot with a moment lens every day, I still use their case every day. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to share is this. We were talking about it yesterday, yeah. so for those of you who were here yesterday, um, this is the, um, it's the Joby Grip Tight 1 micro stand, and it's like just barely bigger than my chapstick. So I, I carry it around sometimes in my pocket. It's it so is. tiny, right? So this yeah. is a tripod, everyone. Yeah. And it is it's a, a mobile phone and it tripod. And it's in your pocket. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty great. So I don't know how, if people can see this, but you basically like pull these parts out and you have the legs. Oh, here. Close up of you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just look at the tripod, guys. Don't look at my face. <laughs> so, yeah, the legs kind of spread, and you have your three legs, and this part just kind of flips up, and it has that like expandable grippy thing. Um, and all you do is like put the top edge of your phone in and push up, and it grips it. And then you have your tripod with a little, um, it has a little uh, ball head. So, you can just kind of turn it oh. around to like get what you need. It's incredibly useful. It is not, you know, as, you know, you can, it's like a little bit more limiting than of course, like an actual mm -hmm. like full size tripod. But I also don't carry a full size tripod with me in my pocket every day. Yeah. So this is usually in my bag. I keep it like with my chapstick and stuff. Um, so if I want it, I can just grab it. It's great. And um, what use cases do you use? Like when do you use mm -hmm. a tripod? Good question. Um, so, I would use a tripod when I want to stabilize my phone for capture. So that could be something like taking a time lapse. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the iPhone native camera has a time lapse option. Um, Hyperlapse is a, also a really yeah. good time lapse app. Um, and there are other apps that sort of mimic slow shutter. Mm -hmm. So so I've so you know I've been using different apps along over the years. So there's a slow shutter app that gives me. Um, the ability to leave my shutter open for a lot longer. It's like doing it in software, but I can get these really wonderful long exposure, like water shots or traffic moving shots. So I'd want my phone to be stable for those. Um, there are other apps now that sort of account for handshake. So you don't necessarily need, need to have your phone too. on the tripod. Yeah. Um, and maybe you could talk a little bit about the, the Lightroom mm -hmm. uh, app, like whether or not you would need like, if you guys recommend tripods for something like that or not. Um, but before you do that, I wanted to say um, there was a question about whether or not there was a tripod head, uh, sorry, a tripod thread. And there actually is. So if you just unscrew this, these two pieces come apart. There's like the tripod feet part, and then there's the expandable grippy thing. There's, I'm sure, a better name for it. Um, <laughs> I was like, is that the technical that's term? That's the technical term, the expandable grippy thing. Um, but there's a screw right here, so you can screw this. The, the grippy thing onto a normal tripod if you want. And there are also um, mounts that allow you to screw this grippy thing onto a hot shoe mount. So you can basically like slide it into the hot shoe of your DSLR. So oh. um, you can have your tripod with your DSLR and then your little iPhone on top of yeah. it if you want to capture like things on both DSLR and, and iPhone um, separately. So yeah. That's very cool. Do you travel with a tripod for your DSLR? Sometimes, yeah, not always. I think I, I would say these days much more rarely mm -hmm. um, because I've been over the years just trying to like carry less and less. Yeah, like downsize your kit. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it's it can get very unwieldy. I have a great travel tripod from Gitzo though. Okay, um, that I would recommend. It's it's one of those. It's like it's pricey. Like you and you have to invest a lot, but um, the the it'll it's like a lifetime investment like i don't think i'll ever have to buy another travel tripod for my dslr again because it's such high quality um and and so great that it'll be good for my lifetime awesome i mean i've never i um i would like to invest in a mobile phone tripod so i'm sold mm -hmm. yeah um, this is great and somebody asked what the tripod brand is again so it's the joby 
Griptite, I think they call it now, the Joby Griptite 1 micro stand, um, O-N-E. So just look for it. Make sure it's this one though. I, I sent somebody the link and they ended up with the wrong one. So just double check to make sure it's actually this. It looks like this. Um, and then the other one for my DSLR that I mentioned is the Gitzo. Um, I think they have a Gitzo Traveler series. So you can look into that for a DSLR. Um, awesome. Do you have photos? Um, I know yesterday mm -hmm. you showed a few lawn exposure ones that mm -hmm. you actually took on mobile, mm -hmm. and I was blown away um, that utilize the tripod. Um, yeah, you know, I, I meant to, f I could, that was the last thing I was supposed oh, to okay. do last night, and I didn't find it. Um, so I honestly, it would take me a second, I think, okay. to find the long exposures. So yeah. we should maybe kind of go into something else. And yeah. I, I can always maybe find it later. We'll or find like it later. Post it later, um, yeah. And let's go back into Lightroom Mobile then. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about photographing in it or editing? Yeah. So um, if you could pull up the phone. And did you want to? talk about the tech preview before we go deeper? Yeah, sure. So, um, within Lightroom Mobile, um, this is, you know, the, the, the screen that you would open up to, and you see on the bottom right, there is a camera icon. And for those of you that are new to Lightroom, would love to hear from everyone in the chat pod if you um, have ever used Lightroom CC on your mobile device on iOS or Android. Uh, but what's really great, what we um, talked about just a few minutes ago, is that when you tap and open the camera, the capture functionality, there's the option to shoot in DNG and JPEG. And um, it defaults to DNG, which is great. And um, I know when I was new to photography, I did not understand, you know, what's the difference between shooting in DNG and JPEG? And DNG is a raw file format and it allows you to capture more data. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, for me, it's more forgiving because I um, often, you know, while I'm on my DSLR or on my phone, will not shoot it the most technically accurate in, in camera. Mm -hmm. um, I'll overexpose it or I'll underexpose it, which is okay. Um, and DNG allows me to make those corrections without pixelating the photo. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have, um, any words on the benefits of shooting RAW versus JPEG? Um, yeah, I mean, I think you pretty much encapsulated it. It really is that the the RAW file format is uncompressed, so yeah. it maintains all of the data that goes into the image. Um, and the JPEG version is basically, you know, your phone captures, your camera captures all this data and then, like, pre-processes it processes it into a JPEG. Yeah. And so you end up with less data with a JPEG than you would if you were shooting raw. Mm -hmm. um, and now, you know, it used to be in the past that if you shot raw, you'd have to have some very specialized programs to open those raw files. But yeah. nowadays, especially with Lightroom, um, it's much more universal. Um, and it's great as a starting image to edit with. Um, it's not something like I wouldn't shoot raw specifically so that I could send it to my mom, for example, right? It's yeah. if, it, if I know that I want to spend time editing it. Yeah, and um, I find when I edit my JPEGs, um, especially because I'm not always not nailing the um, exposure mm -hmm. levels, I will introduce noise uh, mm -hmm. when, the, when they're JPEGs. So, um, I would, for the newbies out there, definitely practice shooting in DNG. Sounds like Joshua does um, shoot uh, raw on their on your phone and sync back to desktop to edit. Um, that's awesome. So what we just released a few um, weeks ago, so this is the automatic mode, which I personally am always shooting in. Um, and then if you tap auto, you'll see these, these various options. There's the professional mode where you can uh, you know, it mimics your camera manual functions. Um, there's the high dynamic range option. Uh, here in the studio, I don't know if we have, <laughs> have the it's, best example. It's not an ideal shooting situation <laughs> right now. And, and you guys get to see behind the scenes yeah. this way too. You wanna, if you guys can see Paco's back there. Hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's where your questions are coming in. We're reading you on that screen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. um, so high dynamic range will take, um, it's similar to taking a, a three bracketed shots. Um, you know, it takes uh, the negative exposure, um, zero, and then positive, and it merges the three um, using that same technology that's in Lightroom Classic, the HDR merge. Um, 
sounds like Jan's a fan. And then um, what we just released last week, two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, three weeks ago, was the lawn exposure option. So this is a tech preview. So I will say that it is not um, a, a shipping production feature. It is out there for you guys to try and give us feedback. And um, this is great for if you are trying to slow down the, wa the water. Like that's the kind of common scene that people are shooting is, um, you know, they're, they're shooting a landscape and they want that water to really um, look silky. Um, and can you show people how to turn it on? Because you have to actually um, activate the tech preview, basically. Oh, yeah. yeah. I didn't want to like go into your settings. So yeah, that's um, good. So within Lightroom, if you open the settings on the bottom, there's the technology previews. So there's actually two technology previews that we released since the first time we put tech previews on mobile. Um, and you see down here is lawn exposure. So you just um, go down here and um, tap lawn exposure to turn on the lawn exposure um, tech preview. And then the other one, which is not editing or capture related, is guided tutorials. Because we are hearing feedback from all the um, novice photographers out there that are you know, looking to up their game that they want to learn while they're using the app. So um, guided tutorials are in there. So please do try it out and give us your feedback. Um, but I don't know if I will. I don't know if it's worth um, taking a. Oh, if you just tap into one. Oh yeah, look at you. Mm -hmm. Oh here, you have a long exposure. Yeah, these are DSLR shots though, because oh. it was from the landscape stuff yesterday. Yeah, but it's a good uh, um, example um, of what you could do. What you it. can do mm -hmm. with with long exposure. So um, I'm actually not like the biggest expert. Have you tried it? Um, I've tried it a couple times. Um, so I, I like to just, I'm going to just put it down because I know it can be. Oh, like, yeah. Like, sorry. <laughs> I was making everyone dizzy. <laughs> I was like, maybe I should take over from Michelle now. Um, uh, when Michelle's controlling the phone, everyone needs drama me. <laughs> so along the bottom is where your different settings would be. Um, and this is like, oh, let's see, like an exposure compensation, making it brighter or darker. Yeah. And then the next one is really like how long you're capturing for. So this is where you would choose a duration of your long exposure. So I think that given this, um, you know, there's this, uh, sorry, two things. Um, the next setting along the bottom is like the handshake, like accounting for handshake or not, basically. Yeah. So I just leave mine on because I usually just take photos with my um, without the tripod, just handheld. Yeah, I mean the team's intent is to um, have mm -hmm. everyone try this without a tripod mm -hmm. to see, um, you know, if, if it's a viable. Option. Sure. However, I think that if you're going up to like five seconds, that's yeah. probably like pushing it. So yeah. I would say like within reason. So I'd say like, you know, some of the long exposures that are shorter. Like on this end of the spectrum, you could mm -hmm. maybe do um, handheld. Yep. But if you're gonna go, um, sorry, if you're gonna go all the way to like, you know, more anything more than a second for sure, you probably want to use a tripod. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, beyond that, just the normal settings like changing your white balance. This is a focus, um, so you can select, you can drag this to sort of select what's in focus and you get the like green highlights that show yeah. you what's in focus and what's not. So it's basically a manual focus option. Um, and if I want to reset everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty cool what you can do with it. So I would say that this might be a replacement for me for slow shutter, mm. um, for under some circumstances. Um, and I, I have to say, can I talk about like a really cool iPhone feature. Yeah. Okay, it's a really cool iPhone feature. Um, so not everyone's gonna have it. Um, it's like on newer iPhones and, um, it's on newer iPhones and f on photos taken with a newer iOS. So I have this, um, this photo is was taken by a friend of mine. Her name is Jane Hamill. She's up in Seattle. Um, I didn't have a really good demo photo for this particular feature, so she let me use her photo from Iceland, um, which is is great. Um, but what what um, oh. what the iPhone now enables you to do on the live photos is basically swipe up and add different effects. 
So it's a little bit, you won't be able to see exactly what I'm doing on the screen because it's not showing you my whole screen as I see it. But if you go into your folder that has the live photos, if you go to any live photo captured on the new, like the newer iOS as of maybe a year ago, so newer live photos captured um, on the newer iOSs. If you go, if you swipe up, you get, I wish I could show you, but you get these different effects. Um, and the first one is loop. So it basically, oh yeah, I think you, can you guys see that? Yeah. Okay. So that oh. the first one, yeah, I, I don't see it on mine. Um, yep. But yeah, great. So you can, you basically loop it. So it plays it forward like a, like a regular mm -hmm. video. And then if I want to, sorry, this is, it, it messes me up. It won't let me take over again. Uh, okay. Sorry, it's something about the way that the connection is working um, from the phone. Oh, I just turned it off. How do I fix that, guys? Like, I, oh, so okay, use, oh, what, yeah. Because right now, when it loops, it goes to AirPlay, so, so I can't, can't see, see it, it and I can't control it. It's going so, to AirPlay. So yeah. Maybe try, do you have Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and that stuff on? Uh, so what maybe. do you want me to do? I mean, I can. Um, this is a problem. When I teach, it's always a problem with these direct cables, so I always do it and through QuickTime. You can unplug yeah. it, do and the setting, and then we can plug it back in if you need to. Yeah. So go to the main shot card. The, the main, the main what? I'm sorry. Okay. So Can I just plug back in and show and do it again? Yeah. Separately? Yeah. Because okay. it worked the first time around. Yeah. Yeah. It, this so always that's what happens. You show, right? I'll go to the rescue. Yeah. Well, I mean, I want to show. Go to Can the we get it back on the crack? screen? Yeah. yeah. So I want to show. I mean, this you can't you can't show this yeah, with this one, setup. This point, right. Um, but then once I show this, this is the next effect. Uh, the next effect is bounce, so you guys mm -hmm. can see that on the screen. Yeah. Um, so the first one is loop, that like plays forward. And the second one is bounce, so it plays forward and then backward. And then the third one is the really cool one, um, the bigger shot card. which is long exposure. Um, and what I'm going to do is actually, um, because of the setup, what I'm going to do is actually unplug and then replug to show that to you. Sorry, that's like a really terrible hack workaround. Um, so what's happening is, as she swipes up on the photo, there's options for different effects. Um, and The last effect option that I have is to change it to a long exposure. Can I show mm -hmm. my iPhone again, please, guys? Yeah, so essentially all I did was I had a live photo. This is cool. Yeah, yeah, all I did was I had a live photo of a waterfall. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking at that photo in your camera roll, all you have to do is swipe up and you get those different effect options and you can apply essentially this long exposure. So this is a handheld iPhone photo that looks like it was taken on a DSLR with a tripod, yeah. which is really cool. So that's the same result that you would get shooting in the Lightroom app as well with mm -hmm. the long exposure tech preview. Um, Minus the JPEG versus RAW, but yes. this is pretty awesome. Yeah. 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 Oh, so if you shoot with the tech preview, you don't have the JPEG versus RAW option. Is that what you're saying? Oh, no. This is on the iPhone, right? Uh, yeah, on the yeah, iPhone. So on the iPhone, it's JPEG, but on, in Lightroom, you it, could do DNG. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. That's that's like definitely an advantage of shooting DNG um, or shooting within the Lightroom app. So yeah, I just wanted to show that. Sorry, I forgot that this setup is really complicated for demoing those features. Yeah. 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 So yeah, yeah. yeah. The um, Usually I do, like with QuickTime, you can demo all this stuff more. Mm -hmm. Like you, you see everything that I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, just like, option, yeah. It. It's okay for today, that's, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, so. I did again, not know that, so yeah, very it's, cool. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty new as of like last fall, mm -hmm. I think. So, so um, back into the yeah. phone. So, um, I think it'd be Awesome. So we have, just as a reminder before we get into edits, mm -hmm. we have 30 minutes before the portfolio submission deadline. I saw a few uh, folks that are um, in the chat pod have submitted. Uh, please do submit. We'll select two and go over them with pay. And um, she's got a very discerning eye, so it's very um, helpful feedback. Okay. Okay. So in terms of edits, if we want to start talking about edits, um, what we can do is, I mean, 
these were photos that I had pulled in for yesterday's um, class, um, like la on landscapes. But I have um, I have a folder. Uh, actually, what I what I can do is I put a folder into my um, phone camera roll. That's basically oh man, I forgot that you. I know I have it's, many it's, it folders, goes um, alphabetical. <laughs> made a special folder and I'm sorry I have to check to see what I need. No worries. Okay. I made a special folder just for you guys but I didn't put it into Lightroom. <laughs> Someone says it's what a cool pigeon crown. Um, oh why you thank have, you. you yeah. <laughs> um, oh sample photos to edit is what I called it. Uh, hold please. Um, so Jay asks about the features that you were just showing in mm -hmm. iOS. Is that only on the iPhone 10? Um, it is not only on the iPhone 10, but it is on the iPhones that have um, live photo capabilities. Yeah. So I think that's like seven and newer, if I recall. That sounds um, right. And it has to be on the newer iOS as well. So. Mm -hmm. Even though I've been able to capture live photos for like two or three years, yeah. I can't go to a three-year-old live photo and apply it. It uh, has to be a photo captured on the new iOS as well. Okay, so um, here I have some images that I put together um, to show you some of the basic edits that I would do. Mm -hmm. um, if we wanna start with something like this, I really um, love this photo. Yeah, this was taken in Vietnam last year as well. Mm -hmm. I think when I, whenever I load up an image like this where there are, there's a building and lines in it, my, my first inclination is that I want to do a perspective correction. I think that for this one, however, I know, you know, I, I can anticipate in advance because I've done it before. What's going to happen is that my my edges are going to get cropped, Lost, yeah. um, and I don't really want to lose it because I don't want to lose this bike is like so close to the edge, yeah, and these like lanterns, lanterns at the top are, are kind of valuable and mm -hmm. like balancing the shot. Yeah. So what I'm hearing, and this is good advice for me, is it's okay if the lines aren't perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, think about the whole composition of the photo because yeah. my first inclination when I'm shooting facades is always to correct the lines and then mm -hmm. um, it distorts and crops out the edges. Yeah, and we can even show you, if I navigate over to the geometry tools. I'm so excited that the team, um, that we've mm -hmm. added geometry tools yeah. to mobile. Yeah, oh yeah, me too. I was still um, I was still using a separate, like a third party, another app to mm -hmm. do this. That um, shall not be named. No, I'm just, <laughs> just kidding. No, it's funny because I, um, over the years as Lightroom CC has gotten better and better, mm -hmm. I'm slowly running out of excuses or needs um, for other apps, right? Mm -hmm. So I was always like, well, it can't do this yet, so I still need to use this other app. It yeah. can't do this yet, so I still need to use this other app. Um, and now with like geometry and cloning and healing, yeah. I'm really running out of reasons to say like, oh, I can't just like do everything I need to do in Lightroom Mobile. Yeah. Um, so within the geometry tools, um, I mean, if we just do a simple like auto, you can see what will happen. Um, it won't be good, guys, but you can see what will happen. It's, it's actually a very good feature, but it's not gonna be good on this photo. So if I hit auto, see how it, um, actually the bike is still in there. That's actually but it crops the lanterns, good. right? It crops the lanterns, so you can see what the before was. Mm -hmm. If I press and hold on the screen, it shows Just the before. The hold, yeah and the after. So I, I kind of thought I went might lose the bike, but it, it didn't, it kind of skewed it in such a way that the bike was fairly well maintained. Mm -hmm. um, but what you'll see, it just, the effect is not quite the same of the yeah. original with the lanterns and then that little decal on the wall at the top of the photo as yeah. well, so. Jan, I'm with you, guided upright is my lifesaver. Yeah, um, I love it. But what I love about what Pei is saying here is, um, you know, you don't have to, make all the lines perfect um, when you're looking at the, f the full composition of mm -hmm. your photo. Yeah, and then also the idea of, um, I mentioned it yesterday, but I'm gonna say it again, um, is that just because the tools and the sliders are there doesn't mean you have to use them. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important to know because especially if you're new to an app like Lightroom Mobile, 
it can be very overwhelming just seeing the sheer number of things that you can do. Um, so don't let that be overwhelming, just kind of tackle it one piece at a time. Mm -hmm. So what I would, what I generally tend to do, um, for those of you who were with us yesterday, you kind of saw me do this as well, but now you can see it on mobile. Um, usually when I go into a photo, the first thing I do nowadays, that the, now that the profiles are here um, within Lightroom, I usually kind of start there and I just like to kind of tap through to see if there's um, one of their color profiles that I kind of like mm -hmm. as, a, as a place to start. Um, because why would I sort of reinvent the wheel if, yeah. if, if these tools um, or, or profiles already exist? Like, why do I need to make it? Um, why should I do this all manually yeah. if there's something that's already yeah. built in that does it for me? And what I like about profiles, so profiles are new as of April. Um, they are different than presets, and you can think of profiles as a new starting point, you know, and um, you can apply your edits on top of it. Uh, mm -hmm. Presets, on the other hand, when you apply a preset, it will move all of your editing sliders, and you'll yeah. see them move, um, and you can adjust them from there, but um, profiles are different in that they're kind of just giving you a new zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like your new baseline, which is nice. Um, so I landed on this one, Artistic 4, that I kind of like. And mm -hmm. what I did is um, I kind of played with this intensity slider to see if I wanted it like even stronger than it already is, mm -hmm. um, or kind of lessened a bit. Yeah. Um, one of the nice things about having this intensity slider also is that you can you can slide it all the way forward just to see what it's doing. So it helps you learn the editing process as well. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if you say, you know, I like this, but I can't tell, you know, from the before and the after, I can't really visualize what it's doing differently, except yeah. that, you know, it's nicer. It. Um, if you slide all the way to 100, like to super strong 100% power mm -hmm. and look at that difference, it becomes more clear what's happening. Yeah. I'm like, oh, my blues it's are so much, much cooler. cooler. Yeah. And like the color tones are much cooler. Yeah. So um, that's just a, you know, if you're if you're trying to learn what what filters or profiles are doing, that's a really good way of doing it. Yeah. Um, and then I like it, however, um, maybe a little bit less, less than, intense. less intense, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just like a slight accentuation of the colors, mm -hmm. um, but not a really drastic change. Yeah. And the, there's a question from from Ima. From Ima, yeah. Hi, Ima. Yeah. Um, Ima is our um, Lightroom CC team intern. <laughs> yeah, I met him yesterday. So he's awesome. He takes wonderful portraits. Yes. Um, so to answer Ima's question, um, do you recommend selecting a profile before you get uh, begin editing? And I would say yes, um, because Definitely. it is your new starting point. So from here, you really want to refine it and make it look good to you for this specific photo, right? Yeah. Not not all color profiles or presets or filters or whatever you use look good on every single photo that you apply them to. Mm -hmm. So it could be a wonderful, perfect filter for like one image, but not perfect on another. So you start here and then tweak and refine. And I would recommend that no matter what filter or, or profile or whatever you're mm -hmm. using. Um, so from here, I actually think that I need to Brighten, yeah. Sorry, my iPhone brightness is a little low, so I was having trouble seeing. So comparing the this before is, this is a dumb question. But There's no such thing as a dumb okay. question. Thank you, Kay. <laughs> um, what brightness setting should I have my phone on while I'm editing? Um, yeah, that's that's actually not a dumb question. I would say what I like to do is somewhere close to the top, but not completely at the top. Oh, really? Um, because you need it to be bright enough to see what's going on, but yeah. what tends to happen is that the iPhone screen, it's much, um, like, is, is really, really bright. Yeah. So it's almost, like, uh, it's too much. So, like, mm. most people aren't necessarily, like, you're sitting on the couch, or you're sitting yeah. in bed, and you're on your phone looking at photos on Instagram or whatever. Um, you're not necessarily at 100% brightness. Yeah. So if you edit at 100% brightness, and then it's viewed at, like, a lower brightness, sometimes um, it can be too dark. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would, I do it at about like 80, 80, 80 to 90% mm -hmm. brightness. Um, here I brighten it up cause I have these like big lights shining on me, yeah. um, just so that I could see what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, no, that's yeah. a, that's a really good question. I think that you should always pay attention to, to what brightness level yeah, you're at. Yeah, I've made that mistake before because I'm often editing photos on my phone when I have like a downtime, like I'm sitting on a plane or, mm -hmm. you know, like sitting on my couch and 
um, for some reason, my phone's always on low battery mode. So yeah. Mine is always on low battery mode, <laughs> yeah. too. It's like so right now. My, yeah. um, my phone brightness is very low. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go and look at my photos later and be like, what was I doing? Yeah, you, yeah. it doesn't give you a good representation of, of what you're doing. Um, and the other thing is that, at least on the iPhones now, they have that like true tone oh. stuff that's basically like, you know, helps maintain, I don't know, I don't remember exactly what it does. It helps to maintain yeah. the um, the color no matter what your sort of ambient mm -hmm. lights look like. Um, but I I don't know. I think it throws me off, so I usually try yeah. to keep True Tone off. So um, here you want to brighten it. A yeah, bit. I think I so I brightened it in here so that I could see. Um, and then what I might do is go into my light settings. That's usually where I start. I usually do a profile. Mm -hmm. And then I go into light because usually there's something that I want to adjust in here. Mm -hmm. um, so like, do I want to make it brighter? Do I want to make it darker? Um, and I'm doing these like very drastic changes just so that so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, I know, I feel like it's like contrasty enough. I don't want to add contrast. If anything, I would maybe lower contrast so I could even see mm -hmm. kind of what that looks like. Um, I might take it down just ever so slightly. Um, highlights, usually I tend to find myself bringing them down. Um, and high, and shadows I might bring up. Mm -hmm. And it really, you know, there's kind of like, there's no formula that works for every single photo, but yep. you tend to find yourself doing like the similar steps for every photo. Mm -hmm. um, so do you have a um, Pei Kachan basic custom preset made? No. No? No. I have user presets that, I, that I've that i made, um, but they don't work for everything. Yeah. So I would never, I don't know, I'd be really hesitant, hesitant to like ship them out to somebody or like to give this to somebody. Oh, as, like, I mean for yourself. Yeah, I Because I do I find use. myself doing, you know, I always bring the highlights down, mm -hmm. shadows up, the blacks down. Yeah, um, I but don't. But I need to alter for each image. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't because I feel like it's so different for each mm -hmm. image. Thank you, Tim, for explaining True Tone in a much more eloquent way than yeah. I could. So please read Tim's comment yeah. about True Tone, because I totally butchered that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Apple, if anybody from Apple is watching. <laughs> um, and I'm actually going to go into color, because I want to see what is happening with my colors. I almost feel like it's like a little on the green side, but mm -hmm. um, I think, I mean, that came with the... Ooh, actually, I already like that better because it was yeah. a little. There was like a little green tint to it, so kind of oops, before, after, before. I do this a lot before, like compare the before mm -hmm. and afters because it shows me well, how yeah. far I've come with my edit, um, and it reminds me to not like take it too, too far, far, just like rein it in a little bit yeah. so it's not over the top. Um, and then I might, I might add a little clarity to bring out some detail. So this is one of those images that you could pull up a lot. Um, but generally at, at the most I would pull to like 20 or 20 something. Um, cause you just want it to be a little pop. You don't need it to, you don't want it to be seen. I think that's the most important thing. I think that's probably one of the biggest uh, sort of editing, uh, biggest points of editing feedback I have for people, especially newcomers, is that their edits are are very heavy handed because it's like, wow, look what I can do with this tool. Yeah. And you just like take it so far. And then anybody who has a, a more refined eye looks right at the, your photo and knows like, yeah. oh, that's too much sharpening or oh, that's too much clarity mm -hmm. or oh, your tones are like, just like taken a little too far. Mm -hmm. um, so you you want to like try to edit in a way that makes it so that your edits aren't super obvious yeah. to people. And on the on the flip side, um, I do find that like what you were doing, taking the slider all the way just mm -hmm. to see what happens, and then toning it down. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't know what what all these tools are, just play because you can always undo it. Yeah. Um, I love uh, this photo. So this is Vietnam? This when is did Vietnam. You this is in Hoi An. Yeah. And um, this is in December. Oh. So I think that I I want to see what a vignette looks like. And again, yeah. I did this with Michael the other day. He's like, you always, like, it's it's inevitable that the first time you slide the vignette slider, you go the wrong direction. So I want to make it, like, a little darker around the edges. Just a little, To yeah. bring out the center. Yeah. Um, so actually that, I was, so normally you can also adjust like your, so if I, if I make my vignette very obvious, you can see what these sliders do, mm -hmm. like how 
how big you want this kind of like area for it, how big you want the area it's affecting to be, um, how feathered you want it to be. Like, do you want it to be super uh, defined or do you want it to be more feathered? Mm -hmm. um, and then sort of how around do you want it to be? I kind of like that. But that feels good, but I want to make it sort of very, actually, it's almost, oh, that's not... That's pretty. That's pretty good, actually. That's actually pretty drastic, but it looks good in the end. Um, what I made you. Oops, oops. So while she's doing that, we have um, less than fifteen minutes left for the portfolio submission. So for those of you who have submitted, thank you very much. And uh, for everyone else, please um, click over to the portfolio review tab, and. Uh, you'll find the link to submit your portfolio, and we'll select two portfolios to review. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I just oh, kind of refined. So nice. I just refined yeah. some some stuff because my um, yeah. my darks were getting a little too dark and a little too muddy. So yeah. it's definitely like a process of going back and forth between yeah. the different tools that you're using. Um, and really, that's it. And you know, I haven't touched any of these other things. Like, actually, I could show you. Um, I get really particular with like stuff on the ground. So if I zoom <laughs> way in, there's this like piece of trash that's really distracting. Yeah. Um, so now you can go into the healing tool. This is also a new feature, very exciting. Yeah. Um, new feature alert. It's, it's pretty great. So um, it automatically opens up your healing brush. And um, if you go to the third icon down, mm -hmm. that's like your the size of your brush. And basically you press it and then slide up or down, and it shows you oops, it shows yeah. you how big your brush is. Yeah. Um, and then you can do the same thing for like how much it's feathered. It's a little awkward for me at this angle, but how much it's feathered. So, so do you want it more feathered for more subtle? Yeah, yeah. more feathered for more subtle, or like um, having really hard edges. So for mm -hmm. something like this, I might you know let's see. Since I feathered it more, I'm going to make it bigger. And then all I do is is basically draw on the point that I want removed. And it auto selects a source for you, mm -hmm. um, like where it's pulling from, and that that actually did a good job. Yeah, you know, I can move that source if I want. Um, <laughs> like, do I want to clone that that piece of trash? <laughs> um, Just put more trash. Yeah, and honestly, it like, did a pretty good job. This did a pretty good job. That that little white dot, you know, it it's not too As big of a deal. Yeah. Um, and I could also do, like, sometimes I will do, like, okay, I know it's going to pull from there. That's a reminder that hey, maybe I should. Um, well, maybe I should, maybe I should get rid of this one first, then, oh. um, and then go to that, and then I can pull. You know, so it's kind of like an order of operations yeah. thing. Yeah, that's some ninja yeah. healing. Yeah, healing brush so technique. Like, on, kind of layer yeah. it on top <laughs> of each other. So then I commit the change at the end. And that piece of trash is gone. Yeah. So when you see, like, if I leave it like that and do the before, after, before, after, yeah. like that nice that piece of trash is gone, which is great. Um, yeah. So it feels pretty good to me. And then um, you know, from there, it's like, wh what do you want to do with the image? Do you mm -hmm. want to share it out? There's like the share button on the top mm -hmm. right, third from sorry, the third from the outside. It's the one the box with the arrow yeah. pointing up. If I tap on that, it gives me my options. Um, to either save it to my camera roll, I mean, there are lots of options, and usually what I do is either save it to my camera roll or share it directly out to Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, no matter what you choose, it's basically going to ask you what image size you want to export. Mm -hmm. um, do you want small, um, which is basically like uh, 20, uh, 2048 pixels long, um, or do you want maximum available? And I usually just tend to export maximum available because I want to know that everything in my camera roll is the highest resolution yeah. it can be. Um, I was I always do maximum available, mm -hmm. but um, is there ever an, a use case that you would you do small? Like if yeah. you're just texting it to someone? Or? Um, so for me personally, no. Yeah. I, would, I wouldn't because, I, like I said, I like to have everything be maximum. Mm -hmm. But the use case is if I want to share out to social media. So if I go to share, if it's going directly into Instagram, which I do do sometimes, mm -hmm. I can hit small, mm -hmm. and it'll render the photo, and it'll basically open, um, it'll give you this 
uh, option to select where you want to export it to. Mm -hmm. And if I say copy to Instagram, it will open the last Instagram account that I had open because I, you know, I have my account, I have my dog's account. <laughs> Very important things. So um, I want to put it Each in my dog, feed. Yeah. <laughs> no. Each dog has no, their own account. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so you go through the process as if you were making a normal Instagram post. Yeah. And then, I actually have no idea which account I was in last. Um, you can select your filters if you want, but you've already edited it. Why do you need to do that? Yeah. So um, then you can make, mm -hmm. you know, whatever options you, you know, make whatever selections you need to, and then yeah. make that post yourself. Is the small? dog, very important. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Luna, Luna Poop. Luna Poop. I mean, yeah. I, can't, I can't wait to meet them. They're great. Um, so you rec so exporting mm -hmm. in the small format, is that okay for Instagram? It is totally adequate for yeah. Instagram because they're downsizing your image anyway. anyway. Yeah. So um, they're not downsizing on top of the. Is it not just like an order of magnitude? No. Okay. No, it's it's not. I get that um, question. That's a good question. Yeah. Um, and the other the other thing to note also um, because I get this question a lot as well. So less specifically about Lightroom, but more about. Um, editing on your phone and like what tools to use. Um, I do say that the um, the Instagram, the tools, the editing tools within Instagram itself are very powerful, mm -hmm. um, but the risk and the reason that you wouldn't want to edit with those is because they, um, when, when you do all your edits and it's a wonderful photo, your perfect end result, you post it on Instagram, the image that's saved out to your camera roll has already been downsized. So you're not getting your highest resolution image out of an Instagram edit. Yeah. Um, so I would recommend using a third party editing app like Lightroom Mobile to make your edits and then share it there. Um, what I wanted to show, I don't know if you have, um, if these are the same accounts, is that yeah. um, any edits oh, you make on your phone yeah are automatically synced to Lightroom wherever you are. So um, Pay has your computer up right yeah. here. So what should happen is that if I go to all photos now, you should be able to see the, and where would it show up on the, would it show up by date? I can sort. Oh yeah, you can um, um, sort. Is it in well, it's, uh, one of it, your collections? It's, it, I didn't, yeah, maybe that'll be easier. Let me do that. Let me add it to, I'm just gonna add it to travel. Oh, wait. Wait, hold on. I'm gonna add it to other and pull it from all photos. There's also, um, we could give the search functionality a shot. Um, uh, I don't know if it'll pick like up the bike or. The, um, the Adobe Sensei yeah. search stuff. I mean, we, we could have that. That's kind of a tricky one. I think yeah, because that it's there are a, other ones that mm. would have been maybe a, a safer option. So yeah, actually what I did was it was in all photos and I was having a hard time finding it because there's so many images in there and I mm -hmm. think that it's sorted by date and this is an older photo. So I put it into my travel folder into the other album and now it's shown, I'm showing up on the bottom here. Yeah. And if I hit the backslash key on the keyboard, it shows mm -hmm. me the original. And then if I let go, it shows me the edit. So it's exactly mimicking what I just did on the phone because it was, this photo was not in Lightroom, um, in the Lightroom ecosystem before like five minutes ago or ten, however many minutes ago yeah. I imported it in. Um, so and now that's pretty seamless and fast. And if you open the um, editing, um, Sliders, you'll see mm -hmm. all of your edits that um, pay applied on the phone are right there. So um, what's really great is it works vice versa. Um, all your edits are synced and oftentimes I'm starting on mobile if I'm just on the go and then, you know, I, I because I'm newer, I like to still look on my computer and mm -hmm. um, to continue my edits. So I'll finish on my computer. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we have five minutes before mm -hmm. the portfolio submission deadline. Um, Go ahead and submit on the portfolio review tab if you haven't. And um, with the remaining five minutes, why don't we go through edits for one more photo? Sure. Because people love going, seeing okay. how, editing. Um, okay, so I can do. Um, I mean, I can choose oh, one of one of these those Tokyo photos. But okay. I mean, do you want me to do one of those? Uh, no, let's do something. Um, well, I was gonna just choose a mobile because yeah. these are not mobile. Mm -hmm. A lot of these, yeah, I think most of those are not mobile. 
So, um, oh, hi, hello. There we go. Let's, let me just pull in really quickly. I have many, many photos on my camera roll, so it takes a while. Sample photos to edit is what I did. So, um, is there one that you'd like me to do? Oh, we should crowdsource. I don't know. Is there oh, yeah, we can. Anyone, anyone have an opinion on which one you want to see pay at it? Yeah. I could do the one that has Dan Tom in it because he's the later speaker today. Yeah, why don't we do Dan Tom? <laughs> I'm going to do this one, and if I hear from somebody else, then we can uh, do it after the do it after. The one that's not currently in her light room. Yeah, so actually, honestly, this is funny because I edited it, and I, I just realized that you're right. It actually is already edited. Let's see. Before, after. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that you was can... a pretty drastic edit. Um... Let me do that. Wow, I'm honored. <laughs> you should be, Dan. <laughs> um, oops. Sorry. Sample photos. Okay, let's find one that's not in Lightroom already. So I can do, um, I mean, I can do this portrait. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so oh, it's, it's a beautiful portrait. Thank you. Um, this one, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see what it looks like in black and white. So I might go through some of those. I mean, it's kind of like my, my work is already done almost. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's actually really nice. So um, what pays looking at the black and white profiles. Um, so profiles, when you open up the editing, um, sliders, it's on all the way on the left. So I kind of like, I mean, I think the colors were good in it, but mm -hmm. I honestly um, am really, I love black and white portraits. And I almost like, this is like the before. I mean, cause some of those tones are a little hard, right? So what's happening is that the light from the outside is much warmer than the light from the inside. Yeah, um, so it's so it's, Yeah, it's like his head is very yellow. His face is very yellow. His arms are pretty like cool. blue, cool tones. So what black and white does is kind of eliminate the um, the kind of need for that. Um, like you don't have to worry about any of the color stuff. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and apply that. And what I might do is um, maybe I'll do a little bit of clarity. It's hard, a little bit hard to see, mm -hmm. but Adding a little bit of clarity is really nice. So, and then I might, maybe I'll. Which black and white profile did you I select? I ended up with the third one. And what are you looking for when you're um, choosing between black and white? So that, that's yeah. a good question because mm -hmm. there's like, there's a lot of variability between the different black and whites. So mm -hmm. even going to like the second one, I mean, look how much brighter yeah. that is. Like how much, how blown my highlights yeah. are, are. I don't want that. I want something that's much more subtle. subtle. And that sort of like maintains the like um, the the tonality throughout. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, this is a nice one. So I, I mean, I I don't know if I would honestly do anything different. I might play with a crop. I mean, you know, if I'm gonna post it on Instagram, I know I needed to go to, uh, to a four by five. Um, so I might try to crop it and keep, you know, maybe make him. Actually, I don't know. I like him smaller in the image because it is such a good. Mm -hmm. um, where did you take this photo? I took this in um, when I was teaching my class in Santa Fe uh, about two weeks ago yeah. at the Santa Fe Photo Workshops. I taught an iPhone class there, um, and he was one of my students. Um, oh. This was at Ghost Ranch, um, about an hour north of Santa Fe. Sorry, there's a little bit of trouble on the edge right there. But yeah. So from the edit, mm -hmm. I mean, that looks pretty good to me. Yeah, it looks great. So I might do that, and then I would it's beautiful. export, save to my camera roll. Maximum. Maximum available. <laughs> Pay likes to push it to the max. I do. I like, <laughs> I like data. And I know that somebody mentioned that um, they use uh, save. So Mel, you said you save to a smaller, um, export as a smaller version when you're running out of phone on, or space on your phone. I would say 
Um, if you have something, if you're if you're on an iPhone, um, using iCloud storage is going to be your friend. Yeah. Um, very very helpful. Since I started using iCloud, I haven't really had to worry about running out of space on my phone. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other questions that we should answer, or should we move on? It's oh, it is um, almost time. Yeah. Perfect timing. It is um, time for our portfolio review. So um, we have these very fun spaceship helmets. I don't oh. know, Pay, Pay, you've been eyeing them all week. I know you want I, to I put mean, it on. I kind of wanted to do the whole <laughs> class wearing these. I mean, yeah. to be honest. Wait, do we do it now? Wait. We're gonna, we're gonna cue the intro. I'm ready. Okay. Hi guys. Hi. And we are in outer space hey, for our portfolio wait, review. Okay. <laughs> this is gonna be like screenshots. Screenshots of this are gonna live on <laughs> forever in our lifetimes. You don't want to keep wait, this on. I didn't know. I wait. I didn't know I could do that. Yeah. I um, mean, that's fancy. Hold on. I'm having. Um, I don't actually really want to keep it on the whole time because it's like echoing. It looks like we're in neck braces when I look at you. <laughs> <laughs> so I say you have to keep it on for a, a little bit longer. If you guys need black fodder, please screenshot right now. <laughs> okay. now I'm gonna take My it head is too big for this. I think it's just your amazingly voluminous hair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so Sorry. thank you everyone for submitting um, your portfolios. We're going to go ahead and review two if we want to cut to my screen. Um, so the first one we have is uh, Francis Sherlock. Um, thank you, Francis, uh, from Baltimore, Maryland, for submitting your uh, Behance page. So mm. it looks like there's a lot of great work here. I don't know if we want to choose um, page like one. Sure. So these are individual images, right? Are these? Do these open up? Oh, these open up. And so these are individual images, not like sets of images, right? Oh, um, sometimes they are sets of images. Because it says project, but um, but these look like individual images, yeah. right? Let's open up. Sometimes they're, um, yeah. Sometimes they are more than one image. OK. How do you, can you tell from the, you just have to scroll? Like yeah. Try scrolling? OK. Um, um, I love Istanbul, by the way. Turkey is probably my number one favorite country I've ever visited. So I have to let's let's, let's, look, at let's look at those. I mean, that's wonderful. Um, the 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 watermark is <laughs> super intrusive. Um, so it's hard. It's like it's very distracting. I mean, I I get why it's done, but it, it's. Um, I don't want to look at watermarks on my on photos that yeah. I look at in just in general. Um, so I would just be like, try to be like super minimal about a watermark. I mean, this is kind of like, it's it's like a it's like a title on a, a photo instead of a watermark. Yeah. And that's like I can clone that out easily if I really want to take your photo. So put it on something that you can't clone it out of. Um, Um, Layla, is Layla in the chat right now, presumably? So this is um, Frances Sherlock's. Oh. Um, so she is from oh, the Frances. chat. Oh, I see, I see. Um, oh, I see. And her family is from Istanbul, so we cool. are um, looking at photos that she's taking, uh, mm -hmm. probably presumably on a trip home to see her family. Yeah. Um, do, we do, um, it would be awesome to hear from you as to, you know, if you have, um, is there a reason why you place the watermark uh, where it is in each photo? And, and and also, I mean, it looks like it's, is it just getting placed on the same spot in every photo? Um, mm -hmm. This one might be cropped in, that's why it's like that. Oh. It's a little pixelated also, yeah. you can see. Um, I'm, I'm actually, Francis, really curious about what, um, if you do any editing of your images, because I think your base images here are really beautiful. Um, and they could all stand to use, uh, they could all stand to get a little bit of 
post-processing done to them just to really make them pop and to make them look like um, images that not just anyone could get. Because I think right now, um, the, the risk of, of either being super, super light, like if you're doing editing and it's very light, um, I can't even tell. Mm -hmm. um, but the risk is that it looks like a photo that anybody who goes there could take, basically. Um, because with photography, especially digital photography, the work of the photographer isn't done when you click that shutter button. Yeah. You do want to back it up with post-processing work um, mm -hmm. after the fact. And yes, I totally get the whole, like, try to get it right in camera. Um, and if you're a film photographer, it's, it's different. It's a totally different story. Um, but with digital, you have to back it up with a little bit of post-processing. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think the, the base images, the composition is really lovely. Um, but like for this one, on this one, for example, there's like really strong oh, chromatic nice. aberration um, it, it coming in from the window. So you can see that like blue tinting coming in from the window. There's a tool in Lightroom that enables you to just move. target that chromatic aberration and remove it super easily. Because um, right now it's, you know, your eye is drawn to like the brightest parts of an image. Yeah. So my eyes go straight to those windows and all I see is that super strong blue purple mm -hmm. that's really easy to remove in post-processing. So I would say, um, you know, keep practicing with the photography um, and capturing the images, but then also to take your work to the next level, spend some time sort of refining the post-processing to make it look like um, a better version of, of what was actually there, just yeah, like just slightly enhanced. Um, and be a little bit more thoughtful about your watermark. I think that, you know, I respect your desire to, to, to mark your images, to re retain them mm -hmm. um, as your own. But think about the, uh, the experience of the viewer as well, right? Like something like this is an extremely intrusive um, for the viewer and really detracts from the image more than it's really helping you out. Um, Cool. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm glad you guys, um, Joshua and, and Leah, are appreciating the this kind of critiques. Um, yeah. I really appreciate it as well. I think it's always helpful to have people kind of pull apart the things that I'm doing mm -hmm. versus just say, oh, yeah, it's great. Like, everything you do is great. And, like, that's not actually helpful for yeah. me because I know that I can still approve upon things. Um, okay. Should we check cool. out another collection? Yeah. Um, should we, I mean, maybe, like, France? Here we go. Yeah. This is an interesting that's perspective. A nice, that's a nice angle. Mm -hmm. I kind of, I've never seen the Eiffel Tower up close, so I kind of don't know what the options are, what the available shooting angles are. Um, but it's cool to see it at night. Mm -hmm. Moulin Rouge, this one looks, this edited. one looks processed. So I don't know if you edited um, these ones over the, um, the ones from Istanbul. But yeah, these, these look good. I'd say that for something like this, um, it's a little hard to see the full image, but it, it looks almost like your um, your horizon's right in the center. Mm -hmm. And I would say, think about what like what I said earlier. Is there anything what is there anything valuable that you want to retain um, in the sky or on the ground? Right. Like for me, there's nothing adding value from the ground. So cropping that up is gonna it, you know your your image isn't gonna lose anything it's it's just going to become stronger because yeah. your horizon will get pushed off center and this van um, the van is not doing you any favors yeah. right so you just crop that out easily so maybe even crop it to just like right there and have yeah. that have that be the bottom of your frame and you can keep a little bit of the top i think it's a vertical so you don't want to lose all of it um, and you don't i don't know if you want to go to a horizontal you it looks like an iphone photo or a, a, a smartphone photo so you're going to lose some data if you crop in too much but um, yeah, Ema recommended cropping out the foreground as well. Um, so this, I, I do agree, like this, you know, you're gonna lose a lot of data, but if you were to crop it and had all that data, this would feel um, pretty good. Um, and then also what you can do is lower some of your shadows mm -hmm. um, on the foreground, because really the, the wonderful thing about in this shot is the silhouettes, um, and you don't need as much detail in the foreground. This one feels crooked to me. I don't know if it's because yeah. I'm sitting off center, but it looks a little slightly skewed. And that's an easy fix. And that's Yeah, that's a super yeah. easy fix. And that's one of those things that um, because it's just slightly off, it 
comes across like you are being careless um, and you don't want people to think that about your photography. You want people to think that you've been, you've been really thoughtful and mm -hmm. have sort of um, taken things like that into consideration. Oh, I can just like pop to another one from here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe Almost. one more. Yeah. Mm, that's beautiful. This is again another one of those like, I don't know if this is a square, but do you want more sky or more water in this photo? I don't think they're of equal importance. So I think cropping some of that, yeah. cropping some of that water off the bottom would be nice. Like even this as a final crop would be really good. Um, okay. Kind of this, like the same thing here. Yeah, I like that there's motion in the photos, but mm -hmm. um, the birds are really wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Um, these are things I, you know, I th find invaluable. Just learning from an expert eye and how mm -hmm. to think about what would be a better composition, because that's something mm -hmm. that you um, can learn to perfect by just practicing more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it's um, oh, this is nice with the birds flying. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's something that, like I said earlier, just kind of comes. Um, a little bit more naturally over time, and you beca it becomes ingrained in you, so you don't have to think about it mm -hmm. um, too much while you're doing it. And and I would say, like, yes, you can always fall back on a crop, but in general, if you can, um, try to shoot in camera, you know, the, uh, roughly the composition that you want in the end for the best result, because the more you crop off your image, the more data you're getting rid of, which means that it'll be, you know, mm -hmm. an image with less, um, less information to work with if you wanted to do something like print. Mm -hmm. And this one um, is easy horizon fix too. Yeah, yeah, just a horizon fix. I'd say, um, I know you can't control where the birds are, but this bird along the top edge is kind of, um, it's super close. Um, and that, that's kind of, it becomes, it's so close that it's becoming like the tangency problem where the, uh. the object is too close to the edge and it it's feels claustrophobic, almost like it's being yeah. cut off. Um, but this is beautiful. The colors are beautiful. This one with some edits um, can Good. really pop. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like um, the images are a little on the flatter side. Mm -hmm. um, add some contrast. Add a little contrast, but also, like, the blacks aren't black. Mm -hmm. So I think that even just taking your black slider down and adding blacks to your image would, mm -hmm. would make this image better. Um, also, it looks like it's wearing a hat. It looks like <laughs> the watermark is a little hat. Yeah. Um, and yeah, uh, Joshua says you can use a cloning brush to clone or remove birds. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, you can. Um, and I would be careful um, if you're gonna clone them and like add more birds, you don't want it to be too obvious. <laughs> yeah. It's like suddenly birds, mm -hmm. the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I have feedback about this one. Um, mm -hmm. So for me, and I don't know if you're shooting, I, I can't tell. This is maybe an iPhone shot at a four by five aspect ratio. Um, but I would want to see it like these trees in the foreground aren't really doing anything mm -hmm. for me. Um, and the tree on the left is, is one of those like, I think that it's nice to add some layering mm -hmm. and dimension and mm -hmm. framing to the shot, but as it is, there's not enough of them mm -hmm. in to really do that effectively. So right now it's kind of at the point where like you either want them to be really in the photo mm -hmm. or like not in the photo at all. And right now they're like kind of in the photo. So I would say for this one, what I would do if, since it's already photographed, I would maybe just remove um, them, remove them um, and then kind of crop. You don't need to crop like, all of yeah. the ones out in the foreground, but just kind of crop yeah. a little bit because there's it's it's too heavily weighted mm -hmm. with these kind of like less interesting trees in the foreground. But thank you so much, Francis, and mm -hmm. um, love that um, you as a photographer are putting your work out there on Behance. Um, I think it's a great tool for mm -hmm. us to you know critique each other's work and learn mm -hmm. learn. So um, we have one more okay. portfolio to review. If you want to click to Joshua. Yeah. Um, hi, Joshua, Peter, Grafstein. Um, Thanks for submitting. Wow, things are moving. Yeah. What's happening? Can I just click on this? Create a video. Oh, Premiere. 
and After Effects. Oh, so I, have to, I wanted to see this one because this is the one. Oh, cool. Oh, it's like a cinema. It's kind of fun, yeah. Um, is that going to be a future feature in Lightroom mobile camera? <laughs> <laughs> Doing cinemagraphs? Okay, let's find um, a photo. Let's, should we do, oh, I was going to do portraits. I, know, I have, probably have more to say about portraits. These are beautiful. Thank you mm -hmm. so much for sharing. Um, Joshua, what do you shoot with? What camera do you shoot with, or cameras? Mm. I love this kind of like in motion portrait. Mm -hmm. It feels very natural, like you guys were just sharing an afternoon on this bridge oh, by the Mark III. Yeah, um, that's a good camera, can't deny. An iPhone 7 Plus. Cool. Yeah. Um, what I would say, I guess this is the full, yeah, if there's no way to scroll, so it's the full shot, right? Mm. Um, what I would say for this one, the feedback that I have on this one is that it, it feels almost like um, she's too centered. Um, oh, yeah? You want yeah, like more on the right? I, I want her either more on the right or I would say even more on the left. You don't want to lose her hair that's blowing yeah. in the back, but even if it was like, when you shot it, and I know that it seems like a super casual, like shoot on the go kind of thing, so mm -hmm. you don't always have control over like precise composition. But what's really wonderful is that you see her moving into the frame, yeah. and so this it does it really well. You you show the bridge, um, you, so you, there's like a spot for her to move into in the photo, which is really great. But I would want it to be like, if I'm photographing this way, just kind of shift my f camera over like a foot. A and what that would do is like cut off some of this dead space that's kind of behind her hair and then open up the bridge view a little bit more. Um, it'll allow it to be more along the lines with the rule of thirds, mm -hmm. um, but really just kind of allow for that movement into frame. Because right now this, the left side is, is kind of useless. Yeah. Do you ever find as a photographer you get attached and you like can't yes. see yes. like what is mm -hmm. um, distracting or useless? Yeah, all the time. Sometimes I'll look at this and I'll be like, really love these lines that are right yeah. here. Yep. But um, yeah. I think that's what feedback is for. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then the other thing that's important to remember is that, um, you know, what is, um, what's more important than composition is really the sort of the emotions yeah. that you draw mm -hmm. out of um, in an image, especially with a portrait. Like like what, what expression does that person have on their face? Um, mm -hmm. That's much more important than like whether or not you got your line straight or whether or not you're following the rule mm -hmm. of thirds, that sort of thing. I think there's a lot more flexibility um, in, in those instances. Like there are plenty of cases where you'll see like wedding photos or portrait photos of this like really incredible expression on somebody's face like they're laughing or having this great time or like going through this like really tender moment mm -hmm. um, and the photo is just like slightly out of focus and you know that happens a lot when you're taking photos like it might go slightly out of focus but in the end those are still the winning photos because yeah. they capture that emotion. emotion really really well and mm -hmm. that will trump composition a hundred percent of the time. So even if it's not the perfect photo, if you get that right emotion or feeling, then that's um, that's definitely the way to go. This is lovely, kind of finding that spot of light. Um, I'd be careful with this is like, um, caref careful not to blow out the highlights when you're oh. really spotlighting like that. I love doing this as well. I use these really hot spots. Um, but you either expose for it in camera, so pull your exposure down so the highlights don't get blown, or you can um, recover highlights using Lightroom yeah. as well. To Would a certain you do extent, a selective yeah. Selective edit just there, or um, I think I think you could. It kind of depends on what it would look yeah. like. Like I would play with a couple different options, mm -hmm. um, but the selective oh, edit is a good option as well. This one was taken on an iPhone. Ah, um, so on an iPhone, if you're shooting either in the native. Um, the native iPhone camera or the um, Lightroom camera, mm -hmm. there's exposure compensation. So just make sure you know that you can adjust your exposure compensation in camera. And what that's gonna do is it'll make it so that her face isn't blown out in a situation like this. And then, um, yeah, you already did it. Um, expose mm -hmm. for the highlights and pull, for the sh pull up your shadows, which is exactly right. And I don't know, it looks like a tiny bit hot to me still. 
um, possibly because it's challenging to capture on the iPhone oh, yeah. and possibly because of just like screen displays and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But really lovely um, sort of overall composition and framing. This is nice. Again, kind of the same thing with like, oh, just be careful you don't blow highlights. I think it feels pretty good. I, I like yeah. this. And I think that um, the having her centered here feels good. It feels nice and bold with like that direct look into your eyes. Yeah. I would be careful with, um, you're not, you don't quite have this problem, but I think you could maybe have made it like ever so slightly better. Um, that, the pole is not quite sticking out of her head, but this shadow is, is a, a little bit. Mm -hmm. So if you think about that, like you don't want stuff jutting out of people's heads. So um, just kind of shift your subject around. Um, Cause you're the one, ultimately you're, you as a photographer are the one with control. So if you need her to shift like two inches to the left or the right, or you can shift your body, you can avoid some of these problems. Um, it's not, it's not, I think. It's not too, coming right out the middle of her head. Yeah, the but, post isn't coming out of the middle, but the shadow is, oh, is really yeah. distracting to me. That's a really wonderful lens flare. This yeah. one's beautiful. I kind of have no, um, no nothing. Critique. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, what is, what, I wonder That's what happened with this like blue, it's like blue noise. Yeah. That's interesting. It's almost like, I, I see weird artifacting like that when I've pushed an edit too far, like I've pushed a single slider too far. Um, so I would kind of, I would go back and maybe re-edit. I think her face looks wonderful, but I don't know what these like weird blue Sometimes it happens to me when is. I'm playing with the HSL sliders for a specific color. Mm, okay. Yeah, but I... Um, yeah. Or so perhaps I, like the blue tone curve. I don't know. Yeah. So I would just say try to maybe a, adjust your edit to kind of eliminate mm. some of that because that stands out as like a really weird um, but thing. But she's very in focus. She's wonderful. Yeah. And see, even that blue stuff kind of comes over onto the left oh, side yeah. as well. So, okay. Josh, Let's. if you're still there, let us know what you did with the blues. Yeah. Um, this is fun. This is fun. Um, yeah, this is kind of cool. It makes me want to look twice. It's like, yeah, it's like inverted. So yeah, I like that. It's fun. Um, bold. What's the? I don't. It's like not quite uh, because this isn't reflected. What's happening? Yeah, I know. It, it makes you think twice. I'm. Yeah. I think this is the original, right? Right, but the yeah. it's not an exact opposite. Okay, um, but it's so the really cool thing about this is that it has made us stop and think. Yeah, and spend time with the image. So mm -hmm. little little tricks like that is um, are really cool. Yeah. Uh, HSL oh, yeah. Uh, HSL luminance adjustment. Yeah. yeah. So so see if you can fix that um, and maybe re-upload because it would probably give you a better image in the end. Yeah. And I think we are um, nearing time. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, please stay tuned. After mm -hmm. us, we have um, Tyson Wheatley and Ashley Batts, um, mm -hmm. Tyson with Tiny Atlas Quarterly. Mm -hmm. So um, they will also be talking about mobile photography. And um, wanted to thank Pei so much. If you mm -hmm. have any last minute questions, we have three minutes. Make yeah. sure you get your questions in for Pei. We'll have mm -hmm. to have you on again for um, Dedicated portfolio review. I think that would be fun. Yeah, I have a lot to say about <laughs> everything. <laughs> um, the uh, I had a question way earlier. Um, I saw, but we were talking about something else. Um, somebody came in and asked what DSLR I shoot with, um, and I shoot right now with a Nikon D810. So that's oh. that's the one that I use. I've had it for a few years. It's um, I'm not a gearhead, so I don't feel like I need to upgrade to every new DSLR that comes out. I've mm -hmm. kinda, I'm kind of happy where I am, and I've been on Nikon um, since the beginning of my DSLR days. Yeah, and you, you also have a, a fun uh, Leica, right? Yep, yep. Yeah. yeah, so my other camera, so I shoot phone, um, mm -hmm. iPhone. I shoot with a Nikon D810. I also shoot with a Leica Q. Mm -hmm. And then medium format film, I like to shoot on a Hasselblad. And I have a Pentax 672 that I've been really enjoying for portrait work. Yeah. So that's kind of, those mm -hmm. are like the main cameras that I use on a regular basis. And when I go out, I would probably take two of them. So it's yeah. usually like my phone and one other. It's usually not multiple. Yeah. It's just like too many to, to handle. Mm -hmm. 
What I love, so Pei, um, as you have probably gathered, is an excellent educator, and um, you have classes online, mm -hmm. and you teach workshops um, all around, mm -hmm. right? Um, so do you know check out Pei's work on um, her website and Instagram, and also um, her classes on Creative Live. Yeah. Uh, but what I love about your classes is, um, you know, you really reinforce that you don't have to be a gearhead to be taking your photography seriously. Mm -hmm. um, and a mobile phone is an adequate uh, medium for professional level photography. Yep, absolutely. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everyone. See you later. <laughs>